What is up guys, it is Steady Chaos. So a lot of people have been asking me for my HDR gaming settings. Now I did a video about this probably a good 12 or 13 months ago now for the LG C10. So I figure now it's a new year, we have a new model, the LG C1. So I'm going to share my HDR gaming picture settings with all you guys out there. Now keep in mind, a lot of these picture settings are subjective. A lot of them are a matter of preference. So you may not like some of my settings or you may find that you do like some of my settings. Um, so if you do, let me know in the comment section down below if you feel like you have better settings and by all means Please let me know in the comment section down below and I will give yours a try and let you know what I think With that said, let's jump into these picture settings and we're gonna go top to bottom So with the advent of HDMI 2.1, we now have more bandwidth to work with so With more bandwidth, we no longer have to make compromises in terms of uh, Chroma or color rendering on our televisions, especially the C10 to the C1 as long as you put the C10 or C1 in PC mode, it can render full Chroma 444. And as long as you have an HDMI 2.1 port that has enough bandwidth, you can send that full Chroma to the TV to be rendered. So let me show you how to do that real quick. I'm sure many of you already know this, but you hit the home button on your LG C1 remote. You go down to the home dashboard. TV's a little bit laggy. There we go. It's worth noting, I like the user interface and the picture settings menus better in the LG C10. I just don't feel like they're laid out very well in the C1. So once you're in home, you go up to these three bullets in the top right. You go to edit, edit inputs. Now whichever HDMI input you're using with your PlayStation 5 or your Xbox Series X or your PC, you go down to set input. So I'm on input three with my PlayStation 5. You select this icon and you just scroll down to PC mode and then you save and you're good to go. And you go right back into your input right here. So again, setting it in PC mode, that will prioritize low latency for gaming, which is great. And it will also allow you to take full color information, otherwise known as 444 or RGB from a source like the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X or you know a 3080 or 3090 GPU and render it fully and capably on the LG C1 or C10. So you get more color information, you get a slightly more refined picture. Now hitting the gear button on the C1 remote, we jump into the nitty gritty of the picture settings here. So we go to support first, go to OLED screensaver, and then you go down to a logo brightness. It's also known as adjust logo luminance or logo luminance adjustment on the C10. I have mine set to low, you can set it to high. Basically all this does is if you have static HUDs, which a lot of games do, or some sort of static logo over time it will dim the intensity of that logo so that burn-in is less of a chance or less of a factor so I keep it at low because I've seen some review outlets like Arting say that in their measurements if you set it to high it can adversely affect HDR's peak brightness in some instances so that is why I recommend you just leave it at low you don't want to compromise your HDR performance when you're gaming ideally right so now we go to energy saving. Now again, like I said, this picture setting guide is going to be comprehensive. So energy saving, off. You don't want to use, you know, energy saving maximum because watch what happens. I've talked about this before, but your screen dims. There's no point in using HDR if you're going to dim your screen this much. Even when you, you use medium, it's still heavily dimmed. So I would recommend if you want the absolute peak brightness from your OLED, if you want the best possible specular highlights and details, then you're going to go off. Yeah, you're not doing the environment any favors, but you are getting the best HDR picture. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the support tab. Then we go to general. Now under AI service, because we're in PC mode, a lot of these uh, extra picture processing settings are grayed out because if you were to use AI Picture Pro or auto genre selection, then the TV is gonna make changes to the image, it's gonna do additional processing, and that's gonna add additional input lag to your gaming experience, which is a no-go, that's just, that's not good. You want a, a fast and responsive feeling controller, and you want a fast and responsive display so that you have a greater level of control and immersion in your games, right? AI brightness settings, you don't want this because what it's basically doing is the screen brightness is automatically adjusted in accordance with the brightness around your TV. So the TV will take it upon itself to dim your screen if you're in a dark ambient environment. If you're in a bright ambient environment, it will automatically brighten up your screen. So it's messing with your settings. For me, I set the TV the way I want it to look all the time, right? I don't want 
the C1 or the C10, whatever you're using to make changes on my behalf when I've already set it the way I want. So I keep this off. AI Sound Pro is on and we'll talk more about this at the end of the video when I go over some of my sound settings. All right, we'll come back to Game Optimizer after. Oh, one more important thing. Go down to Devices. Go down to HDMI Settings. This is critical. HDMI Deep Color. You want to make sure that this is set to 4K. What this does is it unlocks the full bandwidth potential of your HDMI 2.1 inputs on your LG C10 or your LG C1. If you do not select 4K here, then you're not going to be rendering games like Ratchet & Clank in 4K, 60, 10-bit HDR with Chroma 444 or RGB, you're going to have to make compromises and play in 422, 420. So make sure it's set to 4K, okay, to get that full bandwidth potential. Now we move back. We can go up to picture now. I am in game optimizer mode. You want to make sure you're in game optimizer mode. If you're not in game optimizer mode, you're playing filmmaker mode, you play in standard or cinema modes, you're going to have higher latency, right? You don't want latency. Aspect ratio 16 by 9. Most things are natively 16 by 9 regardless. You can also do original because most things are already 16 by 9. But I just keep it there. 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Advanced settings. Brightness. I've said this many times before. But OLED pixel brightness and adjust contrast. They should both be at 100 when you're using HDR. This is the default setting too. Right out of the box. 100 and 100 for both of these. The reason why you want that is in high dynamic range, you want just that high dynamic range. Whoa. You want the maximum contrast between your inky dark areas on your OLED and your bright specular highlights, right? And so you want to maximize the brightness of your TV to get said contrast. If you lower the OLED pixel brightness or adjust contrast to 50, then you're having your TV's potential light output. And so HDR is going to lose some of that impact. So keep OLED pixel brightness and contrast at 100 for HDR, okay? SDR gaming is a different story. But for HDR gaming, to get the brightest specular highlights and to extract the maximum potential out of your OLED, you're going to want 100 OLED pixel brightness and 100 contrast. Screen brightness is 50 by default. That's fine. You don't need to touch that. HDR tone mapping. What can you say about HDR tone mapping? It's very subjective. It is probably the most controversial setting in the YouTube community right now. I've talked about this ad nauseum. Other people have talked about this ad nauseum. It's been beaten to death. <laughs> Basically, if you are new to HDR gaming or you're new to OLED and HGIG, if you want the most accurately tone mapped image in general, you're going to use HGIG. Okay? What you'll do is you'll set your TV right here to HGIG. And then you will go into your PlayStation 5 or Xbox Series X's video settings and you will calibrate there. Okay, and that's going to afford you in general the most accurate HDR tone mapping performance. Your TV will follow strictly the EOTF curve until it gets to its peak brightness at which point it will do a hard clip. And then any information above the TV's max brightness, which this C1 is about 750 nits, any information above that is simply discarded because your TV is not physically bright enough or capable of displaying it anyway, right? So you get a very accurate HDR tone mapping performance from HGIG, right? If you set it to on, you're not going to get the most accurate tone mapping or the most accurate HDR image because what's happening is the C1 or the C10 is using a specific built-in algorithm and it's analyzing the source material on a frame by frame or scene by scene basis and it's making adjustments to the HDR and screen brightness on the fly itself okay so that means by default it can't use a standardized EOTF curve because it's constantly adjusting and manipulating the brightness to generate what it perceives to be the most desirable image for the user right so for some people that prefer you know, a really bright image for some people that prefer great visibility. HDR tone mapping is great. It's an awesome choice to have. But in general, it does artificially brighten the screen and it does sometimes wash out the image. So if you have a game that is specifically developed for HGIG like Ratchet and Clank, I would highly recommend you use HGIG. And then even in games that aren't specifically developed 
for H gig, H gig still does work and still does make a difference, especially if said game has an in game brightness slider where you can adjust the brightness and you can really kind of hone in H gig and you can really kind of abide by that EOTF curve and get the right uh, clip at your TV's max brightness. So, in a nutshell, if you want accuracy and correct tone mapping, go with H gig. If you want brightness but not necessarily accuracy go with hdr tone mapping on i prefer h gig when possible as long as the screen isn't too dark if the screen gets too dark i will use hdr tone mapping on so enough about that peak brightness is automatically set to high because we are in hdr you cannot adjust the gamma uh, from 1.9 2.2 or 2.4 because we are using that eotf curve like i said in hdr the only way you can adjust gamma is if you play in sdr Black level is auto. That is the correct setting. Black level, it's dependent to some degree on how many frames you're pushing from the PlayStation 5. Because the PlayStation 5 is not full 48 gigabits HDMI 2.1 spec, it's only 32, then that means your black level will change depending on your frame. So if you're playing Ratchet and Clank at 4K 60, then you have enough bandwidth at 32 gigabits per second to use full black level so the playstation 5 will output 4k 60 frames per second 10 bit hdr chroma 444 with black level full okay if you start playing a game in 120 frames per second on the playstation 5 it does not have enough bandwidth to render full chroma 444 so what it ends up doing is it uses chroma subsampling at 422 which means by default your black level becomes limited, right? So it can change sometimes depending on the source material. So that is why just you should just select auto because whether the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox Series X or your PC sends full or limited black levels, as long as you have your C10 or C1 set to auto, then you will be, you'll be all set. Your TV will correctly detect it or diagnose it. It'll say, oh, okay, so I'm getting sent a full black level from the source, I'll select full for the TV. And conversely, oh, it's sending me a limited range, I will select limited for the TV. You have to be in agreement, right? You always want the source black level range to be the same as the display black level range. If they are, for whatever reason, mismatched, then that is when you have issues. That's when you could get black crush, that's when you can get a washed out image. So make sure that if you are gonna change this, make sure that your source, if it's unlimited, then your TV is unlimited. If your source is on full, then your TV is on full. But rather than even worrying about that, just keep it to auto, okay? Keep it to auto and you can just kind of set it and forget it, you don't have to worry about it. It's always right, in all my testing, uh, the, the TV has always been right in selecting the right black level. Color, by default it's 55, I leave it there, that's the most accurate setting. Tint is zero, that's also default. Color gamut and fine tune are grayed out. You need to worry about them. White balance, I waffle between 40 and 50 here. 50 is the maximum uh, warmth you can go to. OLEDs, and I've said this before, in general tend to run very, very blue. Uh, and that is really not good for your eyes, nor is it very accurate. So if you want to be accurate, and then you're going to want to get as close to the D6500 white point as possible. And warm 50 will do that for you. Um, but I think sometimes warm 50 is just a little bit too yellow for me. So I go warm 40, but sometimes, you know, I'll do 50. It just depends on the mood I'm in. But again, having the warmer colors too does compensate for some of that OLED light being overly blue. And it is also easier on your eyes, right? Blue light is really harsh on your eyes. So warm 40 or warm 50 here would be the right setting. Technically 50 would be the right setting. The method points, this is all for manual calibration, don't worry about that. Clarity, the default setting is 10, the correct setting is 0. Uh, I like to have just a little bit of edge enhancement in my picture, so I use uh, sharpness 5. Again, if you're a purist and you want the most accurate image possible, then you're not going to use any edge enhancement. You're just going to let the, especially if you're playing in 4K, you really don't need edge enhancement. You would just set it to zero. But again, I like a little bit more crispness in my image, especially if I'm playing a lower resolution game like The Last of Us Part 2 at 1440p. I'll add a little bit more sharpness to try to make up for some of that lower resolution muddiness, if you will. So I have uh, sharpness 5. 
And then all the other settings, because we're in PC mode, which prioritizes low latency, these are all grayed out. If you end up using super resolution, if you end up using noise reduction, MPEG noise reduction, smooth gradation, that's all going to add additional processing for your TV. And when you add additional processing, you add input lag. And that's just, as I've said before, that is not ideal. True motion and cinema screen are off. Now we go down here, filmmaker mode, auto start. You do not want to play in filmmaker mode because you will have tons of latency. Do not, you do not want that. Reduce blue light. I don't really use this because it becomes, the screen becomes overly yellow, as you can see. But it is good for your eyes. So if you're doing a gaming marathon session late at night, then reduced blue light might be a good idea. But just keep in mind, it's probably a little bit too yellow. You're straying a little bit too far from that D6500 white point if you're looking for accuracy. So I leave it off. Now let us not forget about game optimizer. So those are all the in menu LGC1 picture settings that I use. So you just tap the gear button, you see the game bar comes up. We're in 60 frames per second. We're in standard mode. Late, low latency is on, VRR is off because the PlayStation 5 does not have VRR, which is ridiculous. So to open up the full settings, click on Game Optimizer here. And then we can look at my settings. So Black Stabilizer, here it's a scale of 0 to 20. If you go up to 20, you have excellent visibility in shadow areas, but you tend to wash out the screen and make it too bright, right? It doesn't look right. You can go all the way down to zero and you might have slightly better perceived contrast, but then in your shadow areas, you're going to completely just crush your shadow detail. You won't be able to see anything. It'll be black. So if you want to be accurate, then 10 is the default and correct setting. I set it to 11 because I, like I said, I try to game in H gig, which can be a little bit dark sometimes in shadow areas. So by just setting it one tick up from 10 to 11, it gives me a little bit more uh, brightness and a little bit better visibility. White stabilizer, this doesn't really have a major impact on the overall visual presentation, but it does affect specular highlights. If you set it, again, this is a scale just like black stabilizer, 0 to 20. If you set it up to 20, you're going to have slightly better detail in your specular highlights, but the perceived impact and brightness will be a little bit dimmer. If you set it all the way to 0, you're going to have a little bit of clipping in some of your highlights, right? So less detail but you'll have better perceived contrast and better perceived brightness and impact. So for me, I don't find the clipping to be that bad when I set it really low. So that is why I set it to two. It keeps the contrast nice and punchy and it makes my specular highlights, I feel like really, really pop. So give these settings 11 and two a try and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I think it really works well. OLED Motion Pro black frame insertion is off. Reduce blue light, we talked about that, it's off. Prevent input delay, this is an important one. If you are using a, a 60 FPS, if you're playing a 60 FPS game like this from the PlayStation 5, then what you want to select is boost mode. What it does is the TV will interpret that 60 hertz signal or 60 FPS signal coming from your source, like the PlayStation 5, as if it were a 120 hertz signal, so it duplicates the frames, and then you get slightly lower input lag. So. At standard, your input lag is around 12 to 13 milliseconds. When you use boost, it goes down to about 9 to 10 milliseconds. Not a massive improvement, but an improvement nonetheless. N take note, if you are playing a 120 FPS game natively, then there is no reason to select boost. Boost will not help you get lower input lag at 120 frames per second. Only for 60 FPS games will this give you a benefit. All right, game dashboard, that's on. We saw that earlier. AI game sound is off. AI game sound, when playing the game, the AI automatically finds the best sound settings in 3D surround type. I'm not using surround sound on the television because in my opinion, it makes no sense. This TV only has two speakers, left and right, it's stereo. Any surround sound, surround sound you get from your native speakers on your C10 and C1, it's, just, it's gonna be so heavily processed and synthesized and it's just going to be so artificial and compressed it's not really going to make any sense so i i use just regular stereo audio pcm and i'll talk about how to set that up in just a second vrr and g-sync is off the ps5 is not vrr capable so there's no point and nor is it free sync capable so because we're not using vrr we cannot adjust fine-tuned dark areas this is just the menu color that doesn't matter so those are my picture settings from you know energy saving to AI picture controls 
to contrast and brightness and tone mapping and game optimizer. That's everything in a nutshell that I've adjusted. Now the last thing, and as sort of a bonus to this video, we'll talk about my audio settings. So hold down the gear button on the remote. And as I mentioned, I use PCM uncompressed stereo audio because I'm not using a soundbar, I'm not using a receiver, so there's no need for me to send Bitstream, which is for like 5.1 surround sound or 7.1 or Dolby Atmos, right? So click on sound, use AI Sound Pro, Sound out is obviously the TV speaker natively. Go to advanced settings. I'm not using Dolby Atmos, right? Because I'm using PCM stereo, right? Balance is zero. That's what it should be. Installation type. This is important. If your TV is on the stand, you want to make sure you select stand. If it's mounted on a wall, then you would want to make sure you select wall mounted. This can affect the way that the audio is delivered and the way it sounds. So make sure you select the right one. Automatic volume adjustment. We don't want that. We don't want the TV to automatically adjust any of our volume. And then right here, select HDMI input audio format. I'm on HDMI 3, and I've selected PCM instead of Bitstream. Again, PCM is uncompressed, unmolested digital audio being sent to your left and right channel LG C10 or C1 speakers, okay? So that's what you want. There's no need to send compressed audio or 5.1 or 7.1, anything like that, or use Dolby Atmos with the TV because the TV does not have 5.1 channels. It does, not, it does not have 7.1 channels, it's not 7.2.4, it doesn't have Atmos height speakers, all that stuff is garbage. You know, Atmos on a two speaker TV is just, it's heavily synthesized, heavily processed, and in my opinion, it's just kind of garbage. <laughs> so I, I have PCM, which again is stereo left and right, and you already, and that's perfect for your native setup of your TV, because your TV is left and right channels only, right? So it works out. All right, now, it's also important to get the best possible audio reproduction from your C1 or C10 speakers. You want to calibrate the speakers, and you can do this using the remote, which is really cool. So, go back, back, oh, no, I went too far, hold on. Bring up the picture settings options again. Go to general, go to AI service, make sure AI Sound Pro is on. Now, go to AI acoustic tuning. You see I have it set to bass boost. Start new sound tuning. So, if you read the description, to optimize the sound, play test sound on TV and start measuring reflected sound using the magic remote. Get started in a quiet environment for sound optimization. So, start new sound tuning. AI acoustic tuning. So, you can use the built-in microphone because you can also give commands to your TV by voice, right? So, there's a microphone in your remote. You can use said microphone to allow the TV to optimize your speakers based on your seating position. It's just really cool. So let's do it right now. It only takes a few seconds. So normally I sit a little closer. So you just hold the remote like you normally would when you're sitting there operating the TV. So let's start. There it is. Current audio settings are not in their optimal status. Press the next button to play the sound tuned by AI Acoustic Tuning. So next. Here's... This is AI Acoustic Tuning. If we go over, this is AI Acoustic Tuning off. Three, two, one. It's just a little bit flatter. Not quite as rich. So we'll go back to AI Acoustic Tuning. And then there's one more option. You can go down here to where it says Standard. You can keep it at Standard Audio Output, or you can emphasize Bass or Treble. I like a little bit of added richness in Bass, so I select Bass. Bass Boost. Apply. The settings you selected have been applied. The AI Acoustic Tuning application will now close. Okay. And there you go. You have tuned your speakers in your C10 or C1 using your magic remote so that your speakers give you the richest possible, bassiest possible sound. Uh, and it sounds really good. It really does. Let's turn it up a little bit and I'll give you a, a little bit of a demo. Have any of you seen a little gray robot anywhere? Green eyes, red antenna, very charming. Sorry, all the 
not bad at all, right? Not bad at all for AI Sound Pro and for natively built-in 2.2 speakers from your C10 or C1. So those are my picture settings, guys, uh, for both visual and audio on the LG C1, which many of these settings are also applicable to the C10 and even the C9 for that matter. So if you have found this in-depth tutorial uh, helpful in any way, shape, or form, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video, please comment down below, and as usual, please feel free to share this content with anyone that would find it useful. Alright guys, until next time, I will see you later.